mastering the rub and buff technique. How you can take a print to go from this to this. I'll show you all the ins and the outs and my tips and tricks. It's in today's video and it's coming up next. Yeah. Alright, what's up everyone? Back at it again. It is DW Darkwing Dead and today I'm going to be giving you a little bit different of a spin on a very popular finishing method known as rub and buff. Now you may know what rub and buff is or some of you may have never used it at all and basically it is a metallic wax that you can apply to your 3D print. A lot of times it gives it an aged antique look. Really cool effect, something that doesn't take a lot of time, but there are a lot of tips and tricks I'm gonna show you here in this tutorial that can actually help take your rub and buff game to the next level. Even though this is a rub and buff tutorial, we're not even gonna be using rub and buff and I'll explain to you why. What's cool is the product we're using today is just like rub and buff, it's a metallic wax, but it has a variety of different colors. So you're not handcuffed to just using copper, bronzes, golds, and silvers. You can add different colors like reds and blues and things like that, but I'll talk more about that as we move along in the video. We're going to be continuing on with where I left off with my Iron Armor Filler Primer Test. I'm going to be finishing uh, the Jason Mask. We're going to be using what's called Inca Gold, which is very similar to Rub and Buff, but it has a cool color to give this Jason Mask a really cool effect. Without any further ado, let's finish off that Jason Mask and get this video going. Let's go. All right, so just finishing off the Jason Mask with the Iron Armor Sandable Primer. I went ahead and resanded it with 220, did a coat of the Sandable Primer, let it sit for about 35, 40 minutes re-sanded that with 320 and then did a final coat of the sandable primer let that sit for about an hour and then i added a satin base rub and buff does need a black base i chose satin because it has a lower shrink rate it's not going to give us as much orange peel it's going to give us a better finish it's going to look a lot better with the rub and buff let that sit for 24 hours now let's inspect the jason mask and add some color all right so now that we have the jason mask completed we have the base coat we are ready to do our rub and buff overall the mask did come out pretty good however um you know i've never been a fan of just finishing a 3d print with just using filler primer um, you can see here on this mask you dig in a little bit deeper and see that there are still layer lines and that is the downside after you start applying a couple coats it looks good uh, however uh, once it starts to gas and cure and expunge those solvents it shrinks a lot more than something like putty it could look good and then you leave it for you know 12 to 24 hours and then you can actually see those layer lines come back out and and that's what happened here and essentially that is why I always use some sort of putty I spoke on recently that you pull 1k that 1k putty has almost no shrink rate uh, same thing with the Bondo plastic metal when you reduce it with the acetone it, it's gonna have virtually no shrink rate so once you fill in those PLA lines they're not gonna come back uh, something very very important like I said it doesn't look bad most people would be very happy with how this looks uh, however, I'm a little bit particular. I just wanted to show that the Iron Armor Sandable Primer was a good option, especially if on a budget. Um, I think if you use some sort of putty, you're gonna get an awesome result. So if you can't get things like Bondo Filler Primer or maybe some of the other U-Poles, uh, that Iron Armor Sandable Primer really is pretty good. All right, so now we've got all this set up, so we wanna add some color to this. So uh, this is a rub and buff tutorial. However, I'm not using the brand rub and buff. I'm gonna be using what's called Inca Gold and I used these two exact colors when I made my Vecna bust. And these are really cool. Uh, they work exactly the same as rub and buff. So everything that I cover here, you're gonna use it in the same aspect as you would with rub and buff. A little goes a long way. A couple different things I like to have readily available. Definitely wanna have gloves uh, for this process. Uh, this is a wax-based product and you do have oils on your hands and any sort of oil could definitely affect the way that it adheres or the way that it applies so we want to make sure we have gloves on for sure you can apply it with microfiber towel you can also apply it with these little foam brushes i like to have q-tips uh, precision q-tips they work really good um, in case we have anything smudge over whether it be rub and buff or inca gold uh, believe it or not you can completely strip this off with a solvent I have what's called mineral spirits in this bottle. I just have a little bit. You can also use something called naphtha. I've used it before in my past videos. It's called prep all. You can put a little bit on a towel. Uh, you can put a little bit on a Q-tip and just go ahead and basically remove it. I'm sure it'll happen because we have some intricate areas, so I'll show you how that works too. What we want to do here is do uh, these, tr these uh, triangle areas here, and these are going to be red. Uh, so we're going to get our Inca red out here. I haven't used this in a while. It does dry out. So it's good just to kind of take your finger and just kind of mix it up and just make sure it's transferring on the glove. I have extra towels and stuff around here too. 
Just have like a spare towel here, you know, I'll have this nice and close in case I need to wipe a little bit off or if I put too much on. You start off by using the foam applicators just because we have some really sharp corners here and I, I don't think a towel is going to work that great. So I'm just going to get a very small amount on my brush here and again I'm going to kind of prime it. You don't need a lot of product when you do this. Let's see how this goes. This is a very detailed section here. But a little goes a long way. You don't need to cake this stuff on. And you're not really going for like a solid color. That's not the purpose of rub and buff. It's literally just to almost make it look um, kind of vintage in a sense. You don't want to put a lot of pressure because especially on a mask like this where we're trying to highlight the cracks. We want that black to bleed through. And if you put this on too heavy and apply too much pressure, it'll actually start like stripping it off. It's not like paint where it needs to be thick and heavy. So that looks pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is just take a dab of the mineral spirits. And you can see here how there's excess around here. You just go like this and it will basically strip that off and clean up the line and it won't affect your underlying paint mineral spirits really only affect things that are oil based so if you're using a lacquer or an acrylic enamel paint it's not going to affect it at all so i'm just going to go through uh clean up all this with a towel again if you're doing something with a lot of detail you can also get a q-tip and kind of go around here but i'm gonna try to get this all cleaned up by hand see how it looks doing this you will notice that it is smeared around so you are gonna have to rotate your towel both inside and out because uh, what will happen is it'll kind of like spread it around which we want to remove it we don't want to spread it out this tip there use both sides of your towel now that that's on there and it's cleaned up pretty good uh, what we want to do is just kind of introduce a little bit of agitation and force. What I'm gonna do is take off some of the excess wax that's on there. I'm gonna use kind of like heat and pressure to work this in. So what I do is just grab a fresh towel here, a microfiber, rub this in. It's gonna take off any excess and then just work this into the pores. And what's nice is with this method too is any smudging or anything, I'll try to get up close here. You can kind of see how there's a little bit, I don't know how well the camera's picking that up, but there's a little bit of smudging here from where I use the mineral spirits. You just rub around there and it takes it right off. So hopefully you can see that. If not, play around with it yourself. You will see that it works. So that looks pretty good. So then we're gonna do the same thing with the silver. I like this stuff because it's not the, the rub and buff. Sometimes it's like really watery. It's, it's weird and you gotta kind of like mix it up. Depending on your model and desired look, you may find it more beneficial to use the towel over the foam brush or vice versa. Regardless of what you use, you don't want to use a ton of product on this. A little goes a long way. And you also don't want to put too much pressure. Very nice, gentle, even application is really all you need. It may take a little bit to critique your method and get it down, but once you get in the groove, it's free sale until the end. Uh, the Inca Gold, it is a little bit, like I said, because it's not as watery, it tends to almost dry out in a sense a little bit faster. So a lot of the times you have to do smaller sections and I noticed the foam brush works a little bit better. What I'm gonna do here is apply this silver to the rest of the mask and then we'll do a little bit of blending with the mineral spirits. Final wipe down and buff. Show you how it looks. The rub and buff. And it looks pretty cool and you know you may be happy with the way this looks uh, i'm going to try to blend it in a little bit just to give it a little bit more uniformity uh, like i said the actual rub and buff uh it's a little bit more waterier so it kind of tends to blend a little bit differently um you can play with consistency and, and see what kind of pattern or, or effect you're going for i'm going to knock it down a little bit with just a little bit of mineral spirits just to kind of get some more of the black to come out uh, so what we want to do is we want to get a fresh piece of towel we don't want to use one of the other towels that we used and you don't need a lot, just basically a 
a dab of it. And what I actually do is kind of like rub it on the towel so it's spread across. You don't really want to spend a lot of time in one area. You're just kind of, I guess, massaging it over the surface just to kind of knock some of it down. So I'm just looking on here where maybe it's put on a little bit thicker. And I'm just going to wipe it. it'll start to bring that black more to the surface. So what you do is you have to take some off and then blend it back in. But like I said, you're not damaging the underlying paint, so you don't have to worry about, you know, it eating through it. This isn't like acetone. It's not a super, super heavy solvent. This just breaks down oil-based materials. I've done this blending technique on a lot of helmets and it's really cool because when you actually introduce the mineral spirits, it almost in a sense, um, I don't want to say etches it on the surface, but I feel like it just, it works it in more and it takes away some of the unnecessary additives and just leaves the raw material behind. Um, I actually did this method on my Star-Lord blasters and I've carried those around at a couple con events and none of this stuff rubs off on my hands or anything. So the, uh, the mineral spirits really help does just give a really cool effect. So here's the Jason mask after doing the mineral spirit wipe down and it looks pretty cool. It's an awesome effect. It's blended in. It looks uniform. However, it is a little bit too dark. I really want the, the dark and the black and the cracks and the crevices to stand out more. So what I did is I put a little bit more Viva Inca gold on my brush and just kind of highlighted the higher areas on the mask to stand out a little bit more and look a little bit more silver. Then I took mineral spirits on a fresh towel and I did a blotting motion. I didn't do a wiping motion like I did before. This is a similar technique that I did on my original Jason mask. So as opposed to wiping and stripping it off we're just doing a light dabbing motion with the mineral spirit and then taking a fresh towel and dabbing it over and it's making a more uniform pattern it gives a really cool effect it's awesome to do on a painted mask you can see here but it turned out really well on the rub and buff mask as well so after i went through and did my little dab on that and touched everything up gave it a final buff down and here it looks So you can tell it looks just a little bit lighter. It's not as dark, it's not as deep. Uh, there's more of a sequential pattern to it and you can see how those cracks and those black marks and those nooks and those crannies just stand out a lot more. I think it gives the mask a lot more character, a lot more contrast and overall a pretty wild look. This blending method can take some practice and time to get used to, but once you've mastered it, it'll leave you with a finished look like no other. So now that we've done some blending and critiquing with the rub and buff technique, let me give you my final thoughts and wrap this video up. All right, guys, well, there you have it. There is a different spin, a different look at a way that you can apply rub and buff. I kind of stumbled across this method way back when I was doing my Metrocop helmets. I wanted a way that I could easily kind of shade and weather it without having to do all kinds of washes and, and constant cleanup. Now, knowing that mineral spirits break down oil-based stuff, it worked out really well. A real cool option that you can do there. And like I said, this works with all of the Viva Inca Golds and the traditional rub and buff. I know the rub and buffs are a lot easier to get. You can get those at Hobby Lobby and Michaels and all kinds of craft stores, but you're really limited. All they have is gold and silver and copper and bronze. So uh, the Viva Inca golds are really cool and they have a wide variety of colors. They have all kinds of blues, greens, everything. So if you're looking to do a different approach uh, with a rub and buff style, the Viva Inca golds are definitely an awesome thing to look into. Using those mineral spirits, it really kind of works the product into the pores, makes it a little bit more durable. It really gives an awesome effect and it'll definitely make your 3D print stand out from the rest. I wanna thank you guys for watching the video. If you did enjoy the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you have questions on anything covered in the video, go ahead and drop me a comment. You know, I'll hit you back if you are subscribed. Thank you so much. If you're not subscribed and you enjoy all things 3D printing, cosplay, Marvel, DIY, Funko Pops, all the stuff we're doing on the channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button. I'll be sure to leave links in the description with all the products I use. That way, if you wanted to try this method yourself, you can pick those products up. Let me know how you made out. You know, a really cool method uh, of kind of adding a different effect to your 3D print. A lot of different ways you can do it. Like I said, you can use the towel, you can use the foam brush. Uh, it really just depends on the look you're going for. Uh, I found the Jason mask with it being more smooth, it was a little bit easier 
to use the foam brush. Sometimes the towel method works, sometimes the foam brush works. You just gotta kind of play with it. The great thing about it is if you start off using the foam brush and it's not working, or vice versa with the towel, you can just take those mineral spirits, gently strip it off, it won't affect that paint. You can start over, find the method that works best for you, give your 3D print an awesome custom look. That's it for now, guys. I gotta finish up this Jason mask. I am going to be doing a second part tutorial on this. It's basically how to make the T-harness. So if you do make a helmet like this or anything else, and you wanna make the adjustable strap, I will have kind of a part two for this. Uh, it was a requested video, so I'm actually gonna finish doing this video and start filming that and getting that strap on. Uh, so if you're a Jason fan, make sure to come back and check out that video. And of course, drop me a comment and a thumbs up. Another day, another video, guys. I gotta get going. Make sure to give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment, and click that subscribe button. Until next time, DW out. Later. Oh,